everybody. Welcome to It's in the Cards. Nice to see all you new faces out there and the regulars. Thanks for coming tonight. Well, I guess, you know, summer's over for everybody. School by now, for the most part, has started. Uh, if some went back last week, some started yesterday, and some around here started today. So everybody's getting settled in for this new school year. Uh, keep that in mind when you're out driving so you don't forget, you know, the school buses and stopping and waiting for the buses, the kids running around and things like that on the corners. I have a fantastic guest and a fabulous show for you all this evening, so we don't want to waste any time. Um, I have a medium on with me. His name is Joseph Labrodo, and he has been interviewed by NBC and ABC TV, CBS Radio, local and national radio shows, been in the Florida Sun Sen Sentinel, and other national newspapers, and can be seen all over on networks. He is recognized for his loving highly compassionate bridge to the departed. He has a very warm heart and is very humble. And he has helped countless of people. He does quite a few different things that uh, you can hook up with him at. Uh, he receives messages from the other side and gives live psychic readings to his audience in his Messages from Heaven Gallery and his psychic forum. He has sacred healing gatherings where he channels the healing of the masters in the healing of one's mind, body, and spirit. Joseph also has a workshop, Unlock Your Psychic Mind and Opening Up to Channeling. So we're gonna discuss those with him as well. Um, he is also um, the author of the book, Is There More to Life Than What We Know? And it's a spiritual journey and awakening to finding God. He had a whole list of things. He was like, to make sure I was saying the right titles to go with the right things. I want to bring Joseph on. Joseph, welcome, and thank you so much for coming on tonight. It's a pleasure to be on, Misha. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. You'll, I'll probably have to have you back because we're not even going to have time to do much discussion, I don't think, this evening. But I want to get started before we are going to... We will open the phone lines a little bit later. But before we do that, I want to let everybody know that we have some of your followers we have some regulars to the show and some people that may not know anything about you and are meeting you for the first time this evening so i want to get a little bit of background from you um as far as what you do the way you work um i know we discussed this um, prior, because one of the common things, and the regulars hear it all the time when I have a medium on, one of the biggest advice that you hear over and over again is when somebody's going to a medium for a reading, not to expect a certain someone to come through because you never know who's going to come through. And actually, while you and I were speaking of that, um, you do it differently, actually. And I, you do ask up front for a specific name and the relation that they are to the person. Mm -hmm. um, why, why is that? Is it just because each psychic, each medium works? Yeah. Each medium works the same way, uh, different ways. When I'm doing a public gallery where I'm just receiving messages for the general public, yeah, I'm open to whoever comes through, and I'll and I'll and I'll point out to the people uh, I have such and such person coming through for you. But when I'm on an individual reading, especially um, on the radio, I started an event called Psychic Forum, also where I have people write three loved ones 
on a, a little questionnaire form and their relationship. And normally I get one or two of those loved ones that they want to come through. And I've been practicing it all the time and I get better and better at it. So it's like AT&T, a little phone book. I just look them up and I have a, the ability to connect. Um, the, re, the sitters, what you need to do is think of your loved ones. Think of them when they were alive. Think of them when they're healthy. And just imagine them. Just see them in your mind's eye. And that's all I need you to do. Give me their first name and your relationship to you. And then I'm off. So I'm um, to connecting. If I don't connect, then that doesn't mean that they're not around. It's just I just can't make the connection right now for you. Right, right. Now, what abilities do you have? Do you see them when they come through, or do you just hear them speaking to you, supplying information? How well, exactly is your communication working? Well, I'm clear cognizance, meaning that um, I can see, feel, and hear. So when I see, I, I, I can see through my mind's eye. And I also see clear, I can see clear audience and clairvoyance, where I can see them come as well as how they look in their um just for me, you know, I can see how they look um, as well, or I can hear if they're telling me what's going on. So if I close my eyes, I can imagine them right here and how they look to me as well. So I pretty much got all the senses to, to reach them. Right, right. Now I want to touch a little bit about the channeling mm -hmm. and how, how that works, and also you teach that as well. Yeah, well. I started as a channel before a medium, and um, channeling is, is being able to connect with the higher spirit guides, the ascended masters, and I remember years ago, 20 years ago, just so interested in this, and I had a mentor take me under her wing um, named Marilyn Raphael in the South Florida area, and I started practicing channeling, and I started becoming a trance channel, where actually the spirit merges, it, merges with me. Um, I would talk with an Irish accent as Patrick comes through, laughter raises the vibrations, then Sparrowhawk and Indigo. Then I had um, Genevieve, who's the only female, and then the Ascended Master, who is Yeshua, then Yosef, who is Jesus, uh, who will come through, and then the Master Joshua, who is from Moses and Joshua, who come through. And I started journalizing and writing. And um, as I started writing these texts, I started channeling the words of the Masters and of my guides, and that's how... Is There More to Life came to be on the book I published. So, you know, so like I said, with the channeling part, this is who I was at the very beginning. I wasn't doing mediumship work at all. And um, then, you know, people are curious, so I do teach a class on channeling and opening up to their guides and everything. So would you say everybody has psychic abilities, just they don't realize the extent of it or they don't acknowledge it as psychic abilities everybody does have psychic abilities it's just opening it up it's just some people are more further than the others that's the only difference so it's like musicians out there you know or you know people who can play chopsticks and you can have one to play a whole <laughs> <concert. laughs> exactly <laughs> now you do when you do readings you do them in person but you also do them over the phone as well yes correct? Mm -hmm. um, the classes, however, have have to be done in person. Yeah, the classes are classes are in per, uh, when I'm traveling. I do events tra when I travel, and they're all in person. I do unlock your psychic mind. It's like psychic um, learning psychic learning your psychic abilities one on one, and then opening up the channeling. Those are the two classes I teach. Um, I don't get into too much of the teaching. Most of my events entail messages from heaven gallery where I could have hundreds to 200 people come out to see me where I just do random readings. The Psychic Forum is where I only limit it to 20 people and everybody's guaranteed a reading with me. And that's when they have the name of their loved ones in and everything. And Sacred Healing Gatherings, like you said, it's actually the healing. My masters will channel through me and I will put everybody under hypnosis and raise their vibration frequency, their energy up. And it's the healing of the mind, body, and spirit. And this is something... Is a healing circle. And when I returned from John of God from last year, I went to Brazil to meet this incredible healer. Um, something came back. I started to feel this healing ability starting to, starting to work. So I've been working on a few people now um, just to see how it progresses. And, and another thing I offer is what's called Spirit Transfiguration Seance. And this was popular during the day of Houdini and come from Victorian times of England. And I actually would bring spirits into the room, levitate tables. Um, objects will move, like we had a Pilates ball roll. 
and everything. So that's one of my big things that I do when I travel. <laughs> are you when are you, are you going to be here in Pennsylvania, my way, anytime <laughs> soon? <laughs> Not, nothing, nothing yet. <laughs> so, you know. Well, you'll have to, you know, let me know when you're going to be yeah. out my you way. Just, you just never know. As like popularity grows, you just never know. You just never know. You watch in the south. I'm from like uh, <laughs> I'm from the Dixie Belt South. <laughs> oh well, I do want to let everyone know we are going to be doing re well. Joseph will. I don't have those abilities myself that he has. So this evening I will be quiet with the readings, and it's going to be on Joseph. When we do do that, and we do open the phone lines, it's going to be you know through the phone because I have people. You know, very anxious in the chat room there, Joseph, already typing things in regarding who they would hope that you're able to contact. Okay. Um, yes, I'm going to be quiet there, joking about that <laughs> in, in the chat room. <laughs> um, we will have some rules that I'm going to go over as well for when you call in, which will be in about five more minutes or so. Um, where are you going to be for the upcoming months? If people want to get a hold of Busy September. Um, so I'm out of town right now. I'm in Tennessee and Memphis. But as soon as I get back on Tuesday, um, the Mardi Gras Casino in Hollandale, Florida, I have a big event going on there, Messages from Heaven. And I will also be there for three Friday nights in a row where I'll be giving individual readings to our guests from 7 to 10 p.m. But the big messages from Heaven Gallery is September 10th, where um, from 7 to 10 p.m. I will be giving um, random readings to the audience. So on that, I have another psychic forum in West Palm Beach then on September 18th, and then I have another one at September 28th in West Palm. So going on. And that's uh -huh. just off the top of my head. So... We have a few people that entered late, and they're asking to go over what your skills and abilities are once more. And what? we'll do that, and then we will go over the rules for calling in, and then I'll announce the phone number. Well, I am a psychic and also a medium. I've been credited for my medium abilities, and... If you want to get in touch with your loved one on the other side, I would ask, just, just ask for one loved one. Or, you know, if there's parents, you can ask for parents too. But just, I need their name and their relationship to you. And for any psychic or life path question, be direct. Do not be all over the place. To give me, tell me what you feel. You've got to be direct on that, on the question you need to answer. I work like the magic eight ball. You ask me a question, I get a yes or no first, and then I get the reason for the yes or no. Okay. Minus right. the shaking? Huh? <laughs> minus the shaking? Yes, minus the shaking. <laughs> I actually have a magic eight ball at my house, too. I should have, I wish I had it there. Okay, let me see. <laughs> I have one in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we do all that, there's always eight ball jokes. I, I had to have one as well. <laughs> All right, we will be opening the phone lines before we do that, however. I want to go over the rules. Joseph has gone over his requirements, but I will repeat those as well for anybody just tuning in. We, can, we don't have abilities to put you on hold, number one. So when we are on the phone with someone... I need you to please wait until their reading is through before calling in. Uh, when you do call in, I need you to have the show turned off, the volume turned off, muted, however you're going to do it. We'll go in another room where it cannot be heard. Otherwise, all we are going to hear is the show's feedback coming back at us in the background. So that has to be done. Um... Other than that, um, Joseph's requirements for his readings, direct, as I always request when it's a what's going on, need to know something 
what type of question. And if it's a mediumship reading to get a hold of a loved one, he requires the person's first name and what their relationship is to you. So, for instance, Larry, dad. And then um, he can take it from there. And um, we will be opening up the phone lines. I'm going to get the number out to you for those not, and I don't have it with me. I forgot. All right, can you put it in the chat room, please? Sure can. 615-692-1262. The phone is now available to take your call. 615-692-1262. And again, while I'm on the line with someone, you have to wait till it's done for me. Taking, I don't have uh, caller, if you would mute your mute your video. Player, and please. your your show has to your volume has to be turned down. Seven three four area code. You need to turn down the show. Thank you. Are okay, you there? Thank you. Yes, I am. Hi. Who are we speaking with? Uh, this is Tammy. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm terrific. I have Joseph here with me. Uh, did you have a question or want to get in touch with a loved one? Uh, yes, I would like to get in touch with a loved one. Okay. Hi, Tammy. Who's a loved one Hi. that you want to get in touch with? Um, my mom, Sandra. <laughs> um. Was it a hospice situation with the passing of your mom? Yes. Yeah. Um, there was a cancerous. Yeah. Every... Okay. <laughs> she says, "Keep the lights on. Don't shut the lights off." And I think that's her saying that she always wanted to keep the lights off. Don't shut it off. I don't know why I'm hearing that from her right now. Um, okay. Like during the hospice situation, I don't think she wanted the lights shut off. She wanted to make sure there was a light always on because then she knows that she's in the room still. And. Um, She's thanking everybody. Um, she's thanking you especially for making her comfortable on her last days. That her passing was beautiful, she said. It's everything that she expected it to be, she said. Um, she, she, she just, Tammy, she just wants to tell you how much she loves you and how much gratitude she has for you. You try to stay strong through the whole ordeal. And, um, and she's, and, after she's passing, you you just let loose. But through the whole ordeal before her passing, you were strong. You made sure she was comfortable. You made sure the nurses were on their toes to make her comfortable. And she's telling me yeah. thank you for this. Okay. So. Okay? Yeah. I know it's all choked up. <laughs> Anything you want to say to mom? Just that I love her and miss her very much. She knows that. So, she's showing me a ring of roses or a ring of flowers. Are you doing some gardening in your house for her, like a little memorial spot? We were going to do a memorial, yeah, in mm -hmm. the backyard. She's showing me that right now. Was she was she cremated? Uh, no. Okay, I have a little piece of her, um, a little locket, maybe her picture or something with her or something like that. Does that make sense? I had her, um, I had her fingerprint a locket, yeah. Okay, so it's her fingerprint, not ashes in the locket. Okay, yeah. so she's talking about her fingerprint that's in the locket, that you have a piece of her, so it's her fingerprint. So she just wanted yes, to tell I you do. that. Okay? Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you so much. She loves okay. you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling. <laughs> um, also, I want to let everybody know that, um, you know, it is very strenuous to do readings, especially this type, so it takes it a lot on Joseph, so we're we're not going to do from beginning to end non-stop calls. Uh, the limits at a time will be three or four back-to-back, -back, depending on how intense it is for Joseph and when he determines a break. We, the caller has hung up. Anyone out there caring to call in next, feel free and do so. Hello, caller, are you there? Hello, yes, hi, how you doing? Hi, who am I speaking with? This is Sonia. Hi, Sonia, how are you? 
I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm terrific. You, did you have a question for Joseph, or did you want to get in touch with a loved one? I would like to get in touch with a loved one. Okay. What is the name of the loved one you'd like to get in touch with, Sonia? His name is Richie, and he's my ex-husband. Okay. Where are you coming from? Where are you calling from, Sonia? Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. I have two times two times around with Richie. Did you? Um, I know he's your ex husband. Did you try to make your marriage spark twice? Did I try to what? Make your marriage work twice with him? Yeah, I did. Okay, I had this gentleman saying it was two times around, and we tried to make it work two times. But you know, it is what it is. But in the, in the long run, we. We went our separate ways, but we still loved each other. And we try to not make things difficult. And this is what he was saying, that um, even though we were apart, he still did love you. And he still did think of you. Um, he is happy where you are right now. I take it you're with someone right now in a relationship? Yes. Okay. So he's just telling me that he's happy in the relationship and where you are right now. And... Um, He's at peace. He wants to let you know that he made his peace. I think he was going through some difficulties, um, depression. and um, But he made his peace, and he's okay. So whatever he went through, he's just wanting to let you know that he's, he's good. He's okay. All right? Yeah, he just passed away last week. Uh-huh. Um, well, for him just passing away next week, that means he's just coming in clear as a bell. Do you have three children together? No, two. Okay. Did you miscarriage on one? Did you lose a child? No. Okay. I don't know why I have three. Did you have th another child with someone else? Yeah, I have two with another one. Another one with someone else. Okay. All right. So with him passing, though, just he's just want to let you know that he, he's okay and everything's okay with him. What happened? Anything with his chest? Or heart area? Uh, his lungs. Lungs. Okay. That's where I'm feeling the pain is, is his lungs and where it, where it came out. So um, just remember the good times. Remember the good times we had together. And he'll always remember you and he'll always love you. And that's pretty much what he wants to tell you, Sonia. Okay? Well, that's, I have a question for you. When... Uh, when you're in person, do you get to see if there's, like, more than one spirit around you? Because I've been told that there's a lot of people around me all the time. When I, when I do a private reading with somebody, I normally go through the whole family tree. And I can sense more people and everything. That's why I try to, on the radio, I say, eh, give me one person, one person name. Because if you say who's around me, I'll start hitting all, I'll be, I'll be here for an hour going through your whole family. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm hoping to see you at the. I'm hoping to see you at um at Mardi Gras. Good. That's going to be a great show. I'm looking forward to it this Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, I believe, or next Tuesday. So. Yes. The ten. Okay. Hey, thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Hi. Bye bye. Um. So I want to address that actually. Um. Because that was a recent passing for her, that last caller. Um, is it normal to be able to make contact when it's such a recent Sometimes. passing? It depends on the death. If it was an accident, car accident, so forth. Sometimes I have a difficult when it's a, or a suicide, especially um, at the very beginning. They need time to sort things out and everything. So if it, if it you know, but. I just felt his presence just so quickly. And then he told me he died his lungs, his chest and stuff. And, you know, so he was here. And he just wanted to say hello. And he knew that Sonia was thinking about him. And just wanted to express a little bit about how he felt about her. So. What, um, what about past lives? Do you okay. believe in past lives and yep. reincarnation? Yeah, I believe we're all in the same soul family. So ex-husbands, husbands, kids, 
our closest friends. Um, we are all a part of a karmic soul family, and we reincarnate over and over again in that soul family. And we switch roles where um, mothers can be daughters and sons can be fathers and so forth. So we experience just different experiences through each lifetime um, with our soul family. Um, we're giving a small rest here for you because, as, as you can um, see, uh, you know, they've been ringing off, off the hook. Uh, one, one more question I'm going to ask that the 215 area code, please call through. We are so booked that, you know, we have to come up with a better way of, of doing this. Um, could that be a reason when somebody is in touch with the medium, Joseph, and they don't get any contact with a specific loved one because they were reincarnated or how, what do you think the reason is for that or explanation? That, see, that, that's one dimensional. Thing, we, uh, right? hold, hold on to that. We have a caller. Hello, caller. Can uh, hi, Joseph. Um, my name is Margie. Um, Margie. I'm calling. I'm calling about my mother. Her name is Bernice. Can you tell me anything? And where are you calling from, Margie? Where am I calling from? Yeah, what state? Phil uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. Bernice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, she's fooling around with her hair for some reason. Did she go through chemo or anything like that? No, no, she oh. had not. Anything to do with her hair uh, before her passing or anything like that? Well, she always wanted to get her hair cut, and she never got around to doing it. <laughs> okay. So she before she passed, you wanted to get her hair cut to make sure it was just <laughs> nice before everything correct right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> she's still she's still telling you about her hair <laughs> but uh <-huh. laughs> they made her they made her look beautiful though i take it <laughs> yeah they did uh -huh. all right do you have her earrings yeah okay are you taking care of her earrings yes i am all right she just wanted to make sure that you got it got her earrings because that's something that was very special to, to you from her. Now she's talking about butterflies um, or wing it, something with wings and stuff like that that remind you of her. Does that make sense too? Yes, it does. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it the butterflies? Yeah, the butterflies. Uh, you were thinking about getting a butterfly tattoo or something like that? Well, shortly after she passed away, I was just outside and all of a sudden, the next thing I know, there was a butterfly that had landed on me. All right, she's talking about the butterfly. So that is just the validation that she was around when you were outside after she passed. And because she, she told me to mention the butterfly to you. And uh -huh. so it's just uh -huh. her telling me that she was with you and when that butterfly landed on you. Uh-huh. So, you know. Okay. It's just a special validation. Because sometimes we think that when our loved ones pass that they're gone, we don't see them again. But she's just validating that she is there, and and that, uh -huh. that that's one thing about. Um, she had kidney pro kidney problems or anything like that, dialysis or. She had cancer quite a lot, quite a lot all, all through her, just all about through, all through just, her. With the cancer, uh -huh. okay, all right. Yeah. So, um, all right then, pretty much. Pretty much the message she wanted, the main message was, was the butterfly incident because that was her being with you when that butterfly landed. And she just wants to let you know that she does hear you when you talk to her. Um, she does listen. It doesn't go on deaf ears that she does listen to you. Just because you don't see her, she said, doesn't mean she's not there. So okay. she's always cleaning up after people, too. She's always, does she always pick up the house after people? Yeah, yeah, she did that. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's kind of picking up. When I said she gets because she's not there and she has me picking up your house after you. <laughs> was she happy with the way I've done? Was she happy with the way I did things for her? It, it was. It, it, you made her comfortable, and that was the most important thing to do: is uh -huh. make her comfortable on there. Her death 
you know, is the way she wanted to do. She didn't want to be on, um, you know, do not resuscitation type thing. She wanted to go peacefully, and that was the most important thing. So she was in so much pain before that finally the pain started going away as she was drifting. Um, I could think it was hospice, correct, um, on the yeah. very end? Okay. Uh, uh-huh. And, that, and that's, that's the way she wanted to do because the pain went away when she started drifting to sleep, she said. Uh-huh. Okay. 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 Well, thank, thank you so much. You, thank you for calling, Margie. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um. Hello, caller. Hello. 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 Uh-oh. I can hear you. Okay, I think we lost our hostess. Who's on the line? No, I can hear I can hear you. Oh, okay. You're Misha. Okay. So I want to know about my mother, Leslie. Okay. Okay. This is the caller. What is your first name? My first name is Hillary. Hillary? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And your mother's name is Leslie? Leslie. Well, any music? Anybody played musical instruments in your family, Leslie? No. I'm hearing a piano in the background for some reason, and I don't know why I'm hearing. My a piano. grandmother, my grandmother had a piano in her basement. Okay, and did she? When you were growing up, do you remember her playing, playing that yeah. piano? Yeah. Yeah. So your yeah. grandma's coming. Your grandma's coming through right now, and she's playing the piano for you. Okay. Okay. And just just making her appearance right now. Um, hmm. <laughs> your mom is laughing. Does she have a very funny sense of humor? Not really. Then is this your she grandma? More... Then? Does your grandmother have the funny sense of humor? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would uh, be her. It looks, it looks like we have Graham's dad. I'm sorry. I think I got grandma instead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> on there. And I think Grandma's just coming through to say that um, if, if she tells you everything's going to be okay, do not worry. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So that's the main thing. She wants to let you know that everything's going to be okay and do not worry. Everything's going to be okay. okay. Since I'm not getting your mom and Grandma's here, there's this, that doesn't mean Mom doesn't want to talk to you. It's just Grandma found it more exciting to talk to you. And I think Mom... Gave her, gave you her turn. Where are you coming from? Okay. Where are you calling from, Hillary? I'm calling from Farmington Hills, Michigan. From Michigan, okay. Well, yes. welcome to the show, and thank you for calling. Okay, is there anything else that anybody wants to tell me? That's that's it. I just got your grandma. She's just playing away on that piano. She, I'm just hearing her. Did she ever sing show tunes? <laughs> okay. No, that that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> that's what she's doing, and that's all I can hear. <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a good thing. So she's happy. I'm sure she's mom. Happy. Will come I'm sure mom will come through another time for you right now, but grandma. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for calling. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, had one, working. we had one of those moments where somebody requested somebody, and a grandmother came through instead of a mom came through. Ah. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you know it happens. <laughs> we have another caller, and then are you going to need a rest for a while, Joseph? Um, no, I'm good. I can take another oh. one. Okay. Uh, hello, caller. Hello. Hi. Who am I speaking with? Hi, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Did you have a question, or do were you hoping to make contact with someone? I wanted to make contact with a friend. Okay, Joseph needs the friend's first name. What's the name of your friend, Danielle? Sonia. Sonia? Or t- yeah. Sonia, S O N. And where are you calling from? From West Palm. Was it an accidental death or um, drug-related or anything like that, Danielle? 
Um, they weren't really sure, but it was definitely accidental. Okay. They, they don't. They don't know if they had um had she had drugs drugs in her system or anything like that. You no, know, it was more they thought of the heart attack. Okay. All right. But the accidental. How do you, how did the accidental fit fit in? How did it, I'm sorry. Yeah, when I asked if it was accidental, you said yes, it was accidental. How does how does that fit in? Um, she was very she was very young, so it was more of like a shock. Sure. All right. How she died. I touched my head for a second, and I don't know if anything happened to her head as well. And I wanted to ask you about that um, aneurysm or anything like that. Oh, maybe. Okay. I know she had trouble with her heart. All right. I'm seeing I'm seeing angels for some reason, and I don't know if angels represent anything with her. He had an angel tattoo. Um, he had you. angel wing. Had the angel wing tattoo. All right. This is her then telling me what she had on the angel angel tattoo. So I am getting her right now. She told me that she was okay. elected to the party. That she was always outgoing, and um, she, you know, she had a lot of things going for herself. She had a lot of plans and everything. And mm -hmm. you know when you know when we say that sometimes that why does things happen to good people? And mm -hmm. kind of fits in that role, you know. Why does it have to? Because she's just such a good person, giving and loving, as well. Mm -hmm. um, she's talking about a road trip. Did she get back on a road trip or something like that um, before her death? We did. We went to oh. Orlando. You both went on the road trip. Yeah, with um, my dad and her kids. Okay, so she's talking about um, the road trip um, that you all took, and it was very special. She felt that um, bonding, there was um, family bonding on this trip, that um, she had a thing that she wanted to make sure that everybody liked her. And she felt from this trip that you all did like her and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there somebody named um, with an R or something like that, a Ron or, a, or anything like that? What you can relate to? No, not an R. Okay. Somebody alive with an R? Mm. Okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just, I just, some reason somebody, an R, I'm feeling, just came up right now. So, but let me just tell you that road trip was very special between the two of you and the family. And she enjoyed, and, and she felt very close to the family on that trip. And she just says thank you for thinking of her and by doing this. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Okay. Uh, people are uh, getting a bit confused. They might not have been in here in the beginning when we went over some of the roles, so I want to go over them again. We do not have old abilities, so when Joseph is on with someone doing a reading for them, I need you to wait until that reading is finished before calling in. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're not going to get through. There's there's no holdability. You can only read for one of you at a time anyway. Um, also, make sure that the volume is turned off. Otherwise, we're going to get all that feedback and not be able to hear you. And if you're looking for communication from a loved one, he needs the first name and the relation that they are to you. If you're looking for a psychic reading for something going on right now that you need an answer to, a specific question revolving on that needs to be asked. Um, Okay, uh, there are again, there, you, you have a following there. <laughs> we have another caller. Hello, are you there? Hi. Yes, I just turned my sound off. I am here. Hi, who am I speaking with? My name is Michelle from Lakewood, Florida. Hi, Michelle, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thanks for joining us and, uh, 
joining the show this evening and calling in. Now, did you have a psychic question for Joseph, or were you hoping to make contact with a loved one? I was hoping to make contact with a loved one. Okay, he needs the person's first name and their relation to you, please, Michelle. My uncle Paul. They call him Polly for short? Well, I I don't know of anybody who calls him that, to be honest. Is I don't think he would like is it, is it an Italian family? Say that again, I'm sorry, what? Is it an Italian family? No. Okay. Hungarian. Hungarian. <laughs> okay. Instead of Paul, is there a Hungarian name like Polo or Paolo or something like that that they call him? No, they actually just called him Paul. Okay. All right. Hold on, Michelle. Let me see what I can do here. Something about the river, or uh, river or the lake, um, with Uncle Paul. Was he a boating person or anything like that? He actually was an avid boater. Um, initially, uh, he was a deep sea, you know, like he would go out in the ocean and he would do competition. But when I cleaned out his apartment, I found things that were more pertaining to fishing and lake. So, All right, well, this is what he showed. This is what he's showing me, a boating, fishing type type person right now. Um, anything happening with your car? Did you do something with the car recently? I had to get rid of his car. All right, I so he's talking get... about his car then, okay? Um, so that's, yeah. that's, that's what he's bringing up, that you had to get rid of his car. Um, so, yeah, so, I, so I, had, I have Uncle Paul here on there. Yeah, was he ever in the service or anything like that? No, no, he okay. doesn't. Do you have tattoos on his arm? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. Think back of a relative that might have tattoo on their arms that might have been in the service or in the Navy or something like that. Is that maybe the grandfather or something like that? I mean, it's somebody I didn't meet. I, we had a couple of relatives. Um, my my uh, grandfather on that side, his, um, his mother's father was in the Civil War, um, so he might have had a tattoo. I never met him, though. Okay. Somebody who was in the service on his side of the family that, uh, that had a tattoo on their arm um, that, that, that's being represented. And I think, I think Paul, is, um, Paul is very fond of this person, always talked about this person. Um, I don't know if there was war medals from this person that Paul might have had or anything like that, uh, but like memorabilia of this person. Does that make sense? Only one thing. There was a ring that I found in his uh, belongings that most likely belonged to his relatives that dates back to like 19, um, 1920. I forgot what it was. Somebody somebody looked it up for me, but it was a while ago. Okay. Um, so what he's telling me then is to, for you or whoever has that possession of that ring is to please take good care of it because it really meant the world to him. And he wants to make sure whoever gets that ring takes care of it as well. well I have it. I put it in the safe deposit box. So good. I, I didn't know what else to do with it but put it there. It was something that he had, a va that something of value for him that he really was, was something that was precious to him. And if it was his grandfather's ring, then it was his grandfather's ring. And I think this is why he's telling me um, about that, um, he's also talking about something that you, you, something about the dog. Do you have a dog or anything about his dog? Um, I just called his ex-wife because I found a picture of his dog and I wanted to know if she wanted the picture. Okay, <laughs> give the wife a picture of the dog. <laughs> the dog has been I mean, they're they're probably together over on the other side of the rainbow there, but um, that dog was everything to him. Yeah, so the, for him to mention the picture, the dog in the picture, and you just looked at it and you determined to give it to his ex-wife, I think this is what he wants you to do: is give it to give it give because that that dog was probably you know, for both of them, and even the dog is in spirit now. At least his ex-wife can have the picture of the dog, and he wants her to have it. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Have you ever seen me before, Michelle, or this is the first time? You know me. <laughs> I'm your uh, oh, pizza Are you my girl. pizza girl? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I moved, I, moved, I moved from Wellington to Jupiter, so, um, <laughs> so, but then you're no longer there. So I think I gave you a reading that you were going to do something, and you pretty much did it, right? I did. I brought you a beautiful pizza pie for your request, and you were very kind. Oh, you. yeah, that's right. I gave you a reading, and you brought me a pie for it. <laughs> I can use a pizza right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Have a great night, you too. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us tonight. Michelle was our last call for this evening because we are just about out of time and I want to chit chat and get some info out there for everybody where they can find you, where they can find me and all of that stuff. Um, wow, that was quite a bunch of connections there back to back. Does it, does it, yeah. Is it yeah, raining it and Paul taking on you? No, I'm energized. I can go and go. <laughs> okay, this is what I this is what I do, you know. Now, so. when you're doing this, just so people can see the difference, that this was, you know, short brief for the show for time restraint. Somebody's exactly. coming to you for a full reading. It would, yeah, it would be an hour hour session. It would be more detailed. Um, it would be more family tree will come through. And it would be a, sometimes a merging of the spirit with me where they'll see, especially in private readings, they'll see my characteristics will change and act like them. My mannerisms will act like them. And, and that, that happens a lot. They kind of incorporate with me a little bit sometimes. So I, I proposed to a woman at the last gallery. I got down on my hands and knees and said, will you marry me from her fiancé who passed away? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah. And yeah. there's been a lot of energy going on because for the first time ever, my entire system just completely shut down. It didn't it freeze like it normally It just, I got a notice, not work, and it shut down. Um, between your energies and mine, or because I am on with you, um, is there any, somebody trying to come through for me that you picked up? Or just the mutual energy of everything. I think, I think it's just the high energy that's happening right now on there. Every time I do television readings or interviews, it always have problems like this. So <laughs> I got to wear more copper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much, and I'd love to have you back in between all your scheduling. Have your people call my people. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll do that. <laughs> Our peoples will get in touch with one another. <laughs> and where can people get a hold of you on your website for all your info? Um, it's very easy. Um, if you friend me on Facebook, Joseph Labrero the Third, um, I post everything on Facebook. My website is psychicmediumjoseph.com, so you can find me easy that way too. All my events are listed there. My reading prices are listed as well for. You know, my private readings are in South Florida, but I do telephone to re readings around the world, so they work. As you see on the radio, telephone works just as good, so. Okay, and to keep up, up to date with the shows, uh, if you missed any part of tonight's show or you want to read it, that you called in and got communication with somebody and you were nervous, excited, whatever, and missed it, want to replay it, the show will be archived. On YouTube, the link will be put on the Facebook pages as uh, soon as it goes up, and you can find the archive links later on at It's in the Cards Facebook page, and I can personally be found under Tarot by Misha on Facebook as well. Um, each week I do an event for who's coming on uh, for the following Wednesday. And there's tons of shows here for you to look into all week long. Joseph, thank you so, so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having and, me on. And for, for taking the calls and doing that for everyone. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that 
came out. Welcome to all the new faces out there and viewers. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Good night. Local and national radio shows been in the Florida Sun Sen Sentinel and other national newspapers and can be seen all over on networks. He is recognized for his loving, highly compassionate bridge to the departed. He has a very warm heart and is very humble and he has helped countless of people. He does quite a few different things that uh, you can hook up with him at. Uh, he receives messages from the other side and gives live psychic readings to his audience in his Messages from Heaven Gallery and his Psychic Forum. He has sacred healing gatherings where he channels the healing of the Masters in the healing of one's mind, body, and spirit. Joseph also has a workshop, Unlock Your Psychic Mind and Opening Up to Channeling. So we're going to discuss those with him as well. Um, he... everybody welcome to it's in the cards nice to see all you new faces out there and the regulars thanks for coming tonight well i guess you know summer's over for everybody school by now for the most part has started uh if some went back last week some started yesterday and some around here started today so everybody's getting settled in for this new school year uh, keep that in mind when you're out driving so you don't forget, you know, the school buses and 
stop them and waiting for the buses, the kids running around and things like that on the corners. I have a fantastic guest and a fabulous show for you all this evening, so we don't want to waste any time. Um, I have a medium on with me. His name is Joseph Labrodo, and he has been interviewed by NBC and ABC TV, CBS Radio. 